All right, what's going on, Happy Nation? Welcome back to episode 12. This is the Milan Marathon. By that, I mean we play Milan three times. Twice in the Champions League, once in the Domestic League in Serie A. Uh, we first play them at home on April 2nd. Uh, we'll get into what we think is going to happen with that match. But then after that, we do have them away for the first leg of the Champions League. I believe it's on the 12th, my birthday. And also on the 18th at home again. So we're going to talk about the importance of winning this very first match. Obviously, we're going to get into the second and third leg, but we also have episodes upcoming to talk about that a little bit more into detail. So I want to ask you, uh, what are some key factors getting into Milan at home at the Maradona to, to beat them? We can't lose or tie. We got to beat them. Make a statement. What do we got to do? Uh, I mean, first off, we just got to play our game, man. As long as we execute the way that we know how to play from – both sides of the pitch, the fact that we don't want to be lax on our attacking style that we've had the whole year, um, being aggressive. As long as we execute, Mario, I have no worries. Now, I don't think it's going to be a blowout or anything because All right. Milan's going to be ready to play, I think. And... I mean, what we don't want to do is we don't want to give up some type of uh, counterattack goal to say like Leao or whatever. Like if Leao was to score a counterattack goal, man, that would silence the crowd. And, you know, the players might get a little bit agitated about that. Talking about if they went so up 1-0 too, too quickly? Yeah, like like if, okay. if we were attacking super aggressively, like maybe a little bit over aggressive and somehow – we fumbled the ball away and they got a counterattack and layout screeching down the left-hand side and, and he gets a goal in. That's like, that's the worst beginning of the match that I could imagine, but that doesn't mean I don't want them to be aggressive and attack. I just want them to make sure that if they do, cause, and they've done this all year right. that whenever they do make a mistake, you know, three, four or five dudes are running back super quick to get back near the box to help out who's ever back there trying to recover. So as long as they consistently do that on the counterattack, I'm not too worried. Um, I, I do think that we're going to need the best from players like Oseman, Cavada, Keem. I mean, our star players are going to have to play one of their best matches to ensure that there's no, there's no anxiety involved in the match and that we handle it and we go away with a win. Sure. I definitely agree. Uh, then going back on what you said about how the team likes to come back on the counterattack, uh, the first video that popped up into my mind was when we were at Sassuolo. And then uh, we had, um, I think it was Cavada that had like a terrible corner kick and like it went right to the Sassuolo player. And then everybody started running back. It was crazy to see that because yeah. they could have very easily scored a goal. Uh, but anyways, so that is a nightmare to happen if Lau did score that quick in, into the game. Um, but would it worry me? Not really, just because like now this season we've we've been through situations where we're down one zero quite quickly, or uh, you know just something an uncomfortable situation in the first half in general, and we've managed. You know, we we beat the teams, we we even tied some. We've managed to come out with some sort of point. So I'm not really worried if if Milan get the first uh, goal. Um, if they get two, yeah, that's also worrisome, right? That's that's obviously worrisome. Um, mm -hmm. But one one goal mm -hmm. lead against us, I'm not too concerned about that. You know, uh, nerves are going to be twitching. You know, things might happen. So it's not unexpected. It, it, it may happen. Um, but for me, the scoreline for this game, I have Napoli winning 3-1. Um, I think we really do execute very nicely. That first Milan match, yeah, it was rough. It was gritty. I think it'll be a little bit different this time. I think we're a lot more poised and possessed to the point to where Milan can't really abuse us like they did that that last match. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think so. And I, I think that we're in such good form right now and we right. are playing it at home and mm -hmm. there's a lot of excitement in the air. I'm sure that the stadium is going to be packed. It's going to be a sellout game. You know, one thing about that and the sellout is that what it looks like right now is, uh, you know, only if you have a fan card, like the Fidelity card, the Tessa del Tifoso, are you able to buy tickets right now for that game? Um, oh, I, I'm mistaken. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the Champions League game. So let, let's go back on the domestic league. I've been thinking about the Champions League game a little bit. So, yeah, sorry about that. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in another show. For this game, I'm sure it's going to be sold out too. You know, and I, I think that the energy that the crowd's going to give them is going to be important. 
and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of it. Yeah, and it. even if you, even if somebody like Leo does score a crazy goal at the beginning off a counter or whatever, I, I don't think the crowd is going to have any adverse reaction to that. You know what I've noticed? Like their reaction this season compared to last. Like you know how usually like sometimes they would like you know kind of whistle you know fish every every now and then. Now it's more like a like a like, let's go like get going you know like that kind of encouragement. It's yeah. a little bit different this season. You know what I mean? Because uh, we we yeah. know what we're capable of. It's not like we're, uh, we're under underperforming per se. But yeah, I definitely uh, get you on that. The crowd is a huge factor in this game. Uh, the twelfth man is big in Napoli. We all know that. Uh, and people like to compare this game to the last game a lot. Can't really do that. It's been a very long time. Things have changed. Milan has underperformed massively since then. Uh, you know, we were yeah. neck and neck at that point. Remember that too. Sure, Milan has done well in in the UCL. Uh, they do have talent. We're, we're not going to sit here and act like Milan can't compete. No, I'm saying it's a different time, different match. Just just remember that for this match. Yeah. But we have to and, win. You know, we the, can't can't no, take no, it yeah, for sure. And you know, and talking about their their current form, you know, that's sort of a double edged sword in a way. It could be something that's sure. yes, it's really good for us, but it could also be something that just makes them more motivated to get out of the funk. Sure. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then the other thing I'm just thinking about, you know, Raspadori is going to be on the bench for this game. He was nice. able to go through the most recent training with the entire group. So I'm sure he's going to be on the bench. I think uh, Joe Fischetti reported that, saw that on Twitter somewhere um, from Joe. Sweet. So I'm excited about just having him on the bench and having his availability. Hopefully he can get in maybe in the second half to sub somebody out, especially if we're we're up by two goals. But it would be nice to see him get in and actually perform so that yeah. um, you know we can realize that we have another weapon that can come off the bench. And if we need to start him in a game or two, especially towards the end of the season to keep people fresh for the, uh, for the champions league games, I think that's important. I also think that we need to have a very strong backline performance from all four of our defenders. And for me, this match is a Mario Rui match. Oliveira, you know, he should be ready to play in the Champions League game, but we need Mario Rui in this match to make his impact on the offensive side with his crosses into the box, looking for Osimhen and even other players that might be there, like say on free kicks. Mario Rui has some crazy crosses into the box, and I think that this is a match where he could make a difference with a, with an assist or two. Sure. I also think uh, to add on to that, like another key player to really, you know, give us the edge in, uh, in, in this game is probably going to be Lobotka or Anguisa. Uh, we we saw last time how they, they almost shut down Cavada. They didn't really shut him down, but, you know, they double teamed him. They were marking him. So we're going to need Lobotka and Anguisa to, to provide more open play, you know, to provide more space for these guys. Uh, obviously, if you're double marking Cavada, we didn't have Osim in that game as well. So it's going to be a little tougher to be able to do that. But uh I don't know. Hopefully, we see a lot more open play from Cavada this game in uh, against Milan because he wasn't able to do too much last time. You know what I mean? And I want to see him shine. You know, and talking about the midfield a little bit uh, in the papers, yeah. um, I think today actually might have been something that Cavada, so not Cavada, um, Zolinski said in an interview. Um, I read that that he definitely wants to stay at Napoli, and that it seems like Love he's even willing to take a even willing to take a pay cut. So wow. this match, that might be a moment for him to just like put a little bit more umph into the match because of his contract rumors that are squirreling around a little bit. And sure. then um, Kim, Kim also had something to say about playing for the national team and that he's just mentally tired and that he wants to focus on Napoli. Um, so I did see friendly. something. He was just exhausted. He said he played a full ninety yeah. minutes. You know, I I completely get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, for in a, in a, sure. Yeah, so do I. Friendly match. You know. Yep. Yep. For sure. And um, you know, there is a a little bit of a a rumbling about you know maybe he shouldn't have said that. Maybe he needs to be more committed to his national team. But I mean, my honest opinion with all the games that all these dudes play. Yeah, what it he is, said wasn't wrong. It He's is right. To, it is astronomical how many games they play. Exactly. And nobody out there, I think, can yeah, and, and I don't think anybody out there can say honestly that all of these friendly matches that are always played throughout the year are really needed. 
You know what I mean? It's not like it's just once a year. They play several of them. So yeah, they do. I don't know, man. I, I see his point, especially since it's a friendly. And the fact, like you said, he played the full 90 minutes. I mean, I'm just happy that he's he's coming back home healthy and he didn't get a right. knock while he was playing. You know what exactly. I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, and then the other thing, Mario, is, uh, you know, let's just take a look at what's going on this, this weekend to see if the magic number five can drop down to three, if there's a chance for that. You know, um, I see that uh, Inter is playing at home versus Fiorentina, who is at least within striking distance of Juve to get that Conference League spot, if Juve has a slump, of course. And uh, I really don't see Lazio losing points in Monza. Monza doesn't really have a whole lot to play for. So right. we'll see what happens there. I think that there's a chance that Inter drops points, but I'm, I wouldn't bet on it. So we might just end up being... Uh, at Five, magic six, number five. four after this weekend. Or four, yeah. Yeah. And then what do you uh, – you did mention what you thought about the result would be in this match. I think you said three to one. You sticking by that three to one? Yeah, I'm going to say three one. Um, I see Lau scoring here this game. Or maybe even Ooh. like Tonali. I see I see one of the one of the stars scoring for Milan. You know, they'll, okay. they'll get their their little thing, you know. But uh, I see Osiman doing his his one or two goals. I'm telling you, this guy. You, you, if you're not betting on Osiman, something's wrong with you at this point because you can't not bet on him. If he starts to slow down, sure, yeah. fair play. But right now, man, you just can't say he's not gonna score a damn goal. Um, you thinking Mario Rui time? <laughs> Ooh, imagine oh, this shit, game. I hope so. Oh, that's what I was hoping oh, for. Man. I said Mario Dewey twice oh. before. So hopefully he can score. So maybe third time's oh. a charm. I'm going to say at this game right here, Mario Dewey scores a nice banger. Yep. That's that 3-1. Oh, man. Oh, my God. That would be amazing <laughs> if he scores, man. That would be awesome. Um, Especially I, I think it's going to end up – yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that our back line is going to be super hyper-focused for this game. Mm. I think Kim is the type of player – where he's going to use what people may be saying about his comments, his motivation to be even more focused. And I think that the defense wants to make a statement to Milan by holding a cold, uh, a clean sheet. So I, I'm going to say 2-0. And uh, I know you said that we got to bet on Victor every game. I ain't doing it this game. You know who I'm betting on this game? Who? Cavada is going to get his first brace, man. Yeah. Sure, he hasn't got one yet. That is a little crazy, huh? Kate Town's going to juke the entire <laughs> Milan team out just like he did versus Atalanta. I'm joking. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Imagine he did that again. Oh, dude, you know he's going to try. You know, it's not that's I not mean, the last time. It won't be his last time he's going to do, do like that. that. Of course not. I'm just yeah. saying, like, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. close to when it last time. Damn. He's... Listen, I, I don't really know if people are talking about it too much anymore, but you know there was a lot of – back and forth between Milan and Napoli Tifosi about who the best dribbler was. You see that, right? Cavada is a better dribbler, but Lau has better success in his dribbling race because he just pushed the ball up forward. He's a lot He's a lot more about speed. That's where they were trying to get at with that. He's a lot more successful okay. dribble because doing that does cause more success. You're getting past somebody. When you're dribbling left to right, blah, 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 you're going getting fancy. You're going to lose the ball every now and then doing that shit. But uh -huh. let me tell you, when you get, when you so, get it I mean, going – that is free flowing yeah. football right there. It is so lovely to see, dude. Oh my god, we have a, so, we have I mean, a player here, at that caliber. Here, yeah, yeah. Here's my thing with dribbling. So, if you don't have the courage to take a risk in making your moves dribbling when you're one on one with somebody and you're you don't want to lose the ball, then what are you doing? A great sure, yeah, dribbler I mean, that's, is willing that's, to take the risk all the time. So the and fact Lau that is Cavada's taking the percentage risk might be lower. A, yeah, but Lau's taking a risk in a, in a different sense. He's pushing the ball forward, relying on, on, on his speed rather than just his his handles. Does that make sense? He's still taking a risk. Yeah, he just does. knows if he's faster, he's going to still do it. I mean, it's it's normal. Even Osiman does this with his, with his pace. He pushes the ball forward. Even he does that. Yeah. He's not a dribbler per se. I mean, no. it does make sense that – I understand what you're saying, but what I'm trying to get at is when people start talking about the percentages – you need mm -hmm. to realize the way that Cavada dribbles compared to the right. way that, that Leao dribbles. Leao, like you said, advances the ball up, but he's pushing the ball up and somebody's not there anymore. Cavada's juking dudes out, man. Right. You know what he I mean? There's, to someone glued to, to him me, while he's doing these things. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, there's a little bit of difference, and I think you need to take that into account that 
his style of dribbling it is different Completely than layout. Different. Like you said, layout, layout, layout is a blow by speed. blow by player. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. And Cavada uses his actual moves, and I, I don't know. I just think it. You should be recognized more as a dribbler if you're able to juke dudes out and not just speed by them. So, yeah, yeah um, fair. I think Cavada I is going to want to make a statement in this game, man. I really do. Yeah, because Lau will be there too. First brace. He, I know he's heard of the, uh, yeah. the comparisons. Players always hear this yeah, stuff, man. you know. Whether they like it or not. Yeah. But. Yeah. And then the contract talks that are going on um, with Layout, you know, he is um, looking at getting an offer, I think, of seven mil per year. And then yeah. I think Milan has like put an ultimatum on him that, you know, take it or leave it. And I put a poll out on Twitter just to see what people thought about OC Min and what he should make. And uh, let me just see what the results are at this moment. The, uh, the poll isn't done. Um, so that's a surprising, only 46 people voted, but right now it looks like the majority by not much though, is saying between eight and nine. And I can live with that. If, if OC man gets between eight and nine, I am absolutely comfortable that, that that's an amount that he deserves in Mario. So talking about contracts and everything, um, there's been a little bit of noise on Twitter, just about which players could leave. And if those are good decisions or not right and one of the players that i feel like has a that did have an opportunity to leave until he made those comments was was Zelinsky. i think there's other players that are impact players like lozano maybe politano that could exit out this summer but i wanted to ask you something I wonder if the players are thinking about making a pact by doing a 100 percent repeat next year do you think they're thinking about that, like wanting to just play it back with everybody included to try to get a repeat with the same exact roster? Dude, I'm talking nah. like even like, players like, everybody? like MMA. No, nah, no. Nah. Do you we're think that lose. they're talking about that or thinking players. about it? No, nah, we're going to lose a handful so of players you, this season. Who do, who do you think we're going to lose? Them and uh, Lozano and Politan. I think we lose both of them. I think they both move on. Ooh, both? Yeah, I think we, we we pick up two different people there at that situation. I think Juntoli knows what we he's doing. To. You know, he and he understand. Yeah, he understands like this 50 50 shit is not gonna work forever, right? Maybe like this season, yeah, it worked out, but I don't want to keep doing this. <laughs> and he, I'm pretty sure he understands that too. Um, for sure, those three names, right? Just like you mentioned, but also just some smaller ones or some 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 younger guys as well off off to loan. We might be getting some back too. I don't know. Uh, Zanoli. With with uh, Sampdoria, we might get yeah, him back. Is what I was hearing too. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's he's been doing good. So good for him. Uh, we we know that players getting time elsewhere always helps. And then them coming back to us, it's marvelous. But um, other than those three names, for sure, I really couldn't tell you. But I could see them leaving 100. percent So I mean, I don't know, man. I think it would be an amazing story. Of course, if but, all the players sorry. actually came back exactly like it is intact, and if and if you look at all the players that are involved, how business is today, it's just too hard. I would, I would imagine Lozano would be one player that would probably not be super excited about doing that, you know. <laughs> but man, that would be crazy, wouldn't it? Like if the same exact roster just. That would be crazy. Came back and they repeat a but Scudetto. We could be even better. That's what's dude. that's what's crazier. Is we can be even better next season. Oh. Just think about that. Yeah, man. Oh my god. You know, you've got a lot of tifosi out there from other clubs that are, you know, chirping a lot about how we're all saying, oh, we're this and we're that, and we don't have history, and you know, we've only got two Scudetti, and we shouldn't be talking and all this kind of bullshit. You know what? And how is that not history? We have right one of the best players in the world play for us. How do we yeah. not have history? I, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I can't get into yeah. that stuff. That's just ignorance. That's just ignorance. Even at, at two school, we're still like top twelve in, in in the league for how many championships we have. Like, and it takes one more to well, get into the top ten, top top five area. Like Inter and Milan yeah. and Juve are the ones that really hold it down up up top. Realistically, with with, with this with the school, yeah. yeah. But after that, it's a close yeah. game. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, but but here's the thing, man. Um, I am extremely confident that we can have a dynasty and i'm yeah, saying that even if oc men 
I don't want it to happen, but even if Ozyman got sold and ADL used that money to just keep the progress going, yeah, I really believe that that club, that society – is wanting to win multiple Scudetti and wants to compete in the Champions League for the trophy every year for however long. I really believe that that is a real thing, and that is the project that the club yeah. has now. Think about this. ADL you know? has been playing this for, for years, it seems like now, like like for, for, for a decade almost, right? Because the fact that he brought us from Serie A, Serie B, Serie A, and then he still balanced the books while being a competitive club for almost half the time that he's been here. It's it's crazy to think about. And now that we're put into this situation, we are very, very comfortable, especially having two masterminds business-wise, mm. Juntoli and ADL at, at the helm. People be ready because that that greedy ADL era happened for a reason. I, I truly believe that. I really believe that. Did you see the renovations that went on in the tribuna in the stadio with all the uh, yeah. the 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 mural type stuff and just the the different things that are going on over there? God, I hope I can see that soon. I I know that ADL is restricted um, giving tickets away. And I yeah. think it, his idea is that he wants to give everybody out there an opportunity to actually buy a ticket to come, right. not just these special people that get free tickets. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. pretty cool that he's doing that. I just, I just hope that you know, those prices aren't so high that normal people can't still see that. You know, so it looks really nice though, the pictures and yeah. and all that. And you know, I, the thing that I don't like about the. Uh, about like what they're doing with the Maradona statue, like that Maradona statue. I think there's two of them, to be honest. I really don't know this for sure, but I know that two Maradona statues exist. And mm. I know that at least one of them is with, it's in like the hallways somewhere where the players pass by. And I don't know where the other statue is, but the general public doesn't get to see the statues. You know, mm. I wonder like, when are they yeah. going to, try to do something where the general public can see the statues. That would be really nice if that was something that anybody could see at any given time. And I'm sure. not talking about seeing it from like outside a fence inside. I'm talking about being able to walk up to it and really look at it. You know, I hope that that becomes a, a thing eventually for those statues. Cause I, I've seen both of them um, close enough to where I could get an idea. They're nice, Mario. I mean, they yeah. are done really well and, that's they good. really pay homage to Maradona, and it would be nice for everybody to really be able to see those, you know, pretty much whenever they wanted. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if that happens. But yeah, I don't know. Sweet, I'm excited to see it. Hopefully, when I get down there. Uh, before we end the podcast, I have a quick question: Are you going to the Milan game in the Champions League, like at Milan, Milan Napoli, the first leg? Obviously, you're going to the mm -hmm. home game in Napoli, but. Yeah, 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 for sure. So here's the thing. Here's the problem with that. So in order to get tickets, you have to be a season ticket holder for the, the visitor section. I ain't about to sit with Milan fans. No. So I don't have season tickets. So I don't think okay. I'm going to be able to go to that game, to be honest. Uh, but, yeah, I'm definitely um, going to both home matches. And, be on the return um, leg too, so that's good. You'll, you'll see them pass. Yeah, it is. I mean, the, the celebration of you know advancing to the semifinals. You know, let me get some wood here. You know, I'm pretty confident, but yeah, <laughs> never know. It'll be nice. It'll be nice to be there when they actually um, advance to the semifinals if they can if they can do that versus Milan. So it would have sucked if the second leg was on the road and not being able to be there because I'm not a season ticket holder. But um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward At to least it. It's just for like sure. a leg. It works out for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, then. Well, uh, with that being said, I guess that ends this uh, episode. So, Napoli Nation, Forza. Napoli. Sempre. Sempre. Ciao. Ciao.